G'day everyone, welcome to this video on uh, Desmos and particularly how, how you're going to use it for your roller coaster assignment. So we go to desmos.com, we're just going to press start graphing and I'm just going to give you a few hints and tips on, um, on how you can start off your assignment and basically how to use this software. The very first thing I'm going to do is set my V window, so that's in the spanner up here. We can see we've got the constraints for X. So your roller coaster is 400 meters long. Um, I'm going to just set the constraints so far to be from minus 5 to 100 and the maximum height is 50 meters so I'll just set Y from minus 5 to 60 excuse me minus 5 to 60 so I'm just going to start by graphing it over this region so there's our domain there and in here you can do all kinds of stuff like change whether it's got a grid on it and change where the grid lines are etc etc label the x-axis up to you. Right, what we're going to start with is um, we want our roller coaster to have a really sort of steep ascent to begin with. That's where it's going to gather most of its power and momentum and then it's slowly going to fizzle off and go downhill, etc. Um, so I've, I've just graphed this line y equals 5x. We can see it's going through the point of origin. That's where it starts. But we can see it's just basically going up forever, going up that way forever and down that way forever. So I want to constrain that. So there's two ways I could do that. I could um, graph it for 0 being less than x being less than 10. All right. You can see I'm setting the constraint over the x value. It's only graphing x from 0 to 9. Or we could change that to be y as well. We could change the constraint from y. So it's only graphing y from 0 to 9. Um, I'm going to graph, graph it over this interval. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have some sort of a quadratic here uh, to, to level off and go back down into a loop-de-loop -loop kind of thing. So let's go for the next function. We'll, we'll do a quadratic. Uh, let's make it x take 10 squared. Okay. Um, and I need to invert it. So that's going to make it upside down. And then probably what we want to do is maybe make it plus 50 and so you can see all I'm basically doing here is messing around. Okay, what I, what I knew is that if I have x take 10 squared, then it's going to touch the x-axis. All right, I made it negative, so it makes the quadratic go upside down. And now if I just whack a plus 50 on here, it's going to shift it up 50 units. Okay, so maybe we don't want plus 50. Maybe we want plus, uh, plus 45. Plus 45. Not 450 plus 45 and so that's a pretty good transition there isn't it from the red line to the blue in fact it tells us the coordinates where they meet all right and what's so fantastic about that is when we we can change this constraint here so it's we can see y is 31.91 so i'm going to change this value to be 31.91 okay now all of a sudden i've constrained red to that point and for this one we're going to graph it over that same domain. We're going to use the x value. So 6.382 being less than x, being less than, um, let's say, 15. So I'm just doing a bit of experimentation. Okay, So we've got a line, and it's transitioning into a quadratic. All right, It's quite a steep slope. Other things we could do is we could put some numbers in front here. I could put 0. Uh, we won't do that right now. Let's do that in the next one. So we're going to need here, let's let's transition into a cortic of some variety. Um, what I'm thinking is something like this. So we've got x take 20 uh, squared times x take 40 squared. And let's, so we know that when it has a squared factor, it's going to be touching at that point. So it's touching at 20, touching at 40, and then let's dilate it a lot. Okay, so you can see I'm putting um, this decimal number in front here. So that's pretty good. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that one. What happens if I put a 5 there? Oh, that's pretty good. 4. So it's not quite touching. 3... All right, I think that we might be on there. Where does it touch? It's 
So the other thing we can do is obviously zoom in as well. And I think this is the so this is the point where it's touching at 15. And so then what we're going to do is when we constrain our cortex here, let's constrain it from um, x is 15 to uh, x being less than 15 to let's go to 40, 45. Uh, sorry, x being less than 45. All right, so we've got, so far we've got three functions. We've got a line, it transitions us into a quadratic, and then it goes into this cortic where it's touching twice. Then what we might think of doing is let's have a cubic that sort of plateaus off here and then keeps increasing again. So that might be of the form y equals um, x take, now let's say 50 to the power of three. So we know if it's got fit to the power of three, it's going to have that kind of shape. We're going to need to um, add 20 to it to shift it up there. And we're going to, let's put 25 even, and then we'll, let's put that dilation out the front here again. Uh, 0.1, 0.01. Okay, so you can see I am just messing around. That's way too much. Um, what, what was that like, 0.01? So what if we went 0 0.09, 0 0.08, 6, all right, and that's pretty good there as well, isn't it? Okay, so again, we can see the points of intersection. Let's go with this one. And so that is x is 43.699. So firstly, let's go back and fix this one up, 43.699. And then this one we're going to graph over 43.699 uh, being less than x, being less than and let's stop it at here somewhere, 55. And then, so look, look what we've got. We've got a line, a quadratic, a cortic, here's a cubic. Um, and then you can start to adventure with stuff like um, a square root, um, square root of x. Okay, and I'm going to translate it horizontally uh, 55 units and add 35 onto it, 33, 32, all right, and then you can set the constraints there again, so it's sort of going up here, there, um, we can do some circles, uh, we learnt the equations of circles before, you know, x take 3 squared, uh, let's go x take 60 squared plus what, uh, y take 30 squared equals 10 squared. All right, and so then you can have a, have a bit of a loop-de-loop -loop and you can translate that accordingly. Um, let's put it at x is 80 and y is, um, what's the y value there, 70, 36, uh, 30, 45, okay, so you can see I'm just messing around, look at, look at that, okay, and so what we could have is this root coming up, hops on the circle, does a loop-de-loop, -loop, and then keeps going on that root function. Uh, and then you could have it transition into something else. But that's basically what we're doing, okay? Is we're starting with those basic functions and we're just experimenting with transformations. Um, that's how we use Desmos, that's how we constrain it, and good luck with it.